that pass by the way attend and see if there be any sorrow like to my sorrow. Lamentations. We ascribe this to the heart of Our Lady, the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary. And just as yesterday we, we meditated on the sacred heart during the time of Lent and its passion, and today we'll try to consider the immaculate heart and its sufferings during the time of Lent and during the time of our Lord's passion. Our Lady is called, the, our, it, it, she, she, there is no sorrow like to hers, because our Lord was the man of sorrows. And the reason for her existence was our Lord. The reason that Our Lady was created was to be the mother of God. So they were so intimately connected that she shared in every bit of his passion, which was to be the co-redemptor. So her sorrow was great beyond all. And some, I would like to read some of the quotes from the feast of her sorrows from the Feast of the Seven Dollars of Our Lady. One of the hymns is, Oh, in what floods of tears and in what abyss of sorrow was she whelmed, that virgin mother, as morning she beholds her son taken down from the blood-stained tree and laid in her arms. A hundred and a thousand times she locks in loving embrace, and kissing their wounds, and thus she melts away in sorrowful caresses. O oh, mother, we beseech thee by these thy tears, by thy cruel death, by the cruel death of thy son, and by his empurpled wounds, plant deep in our hearts this anguish of thine own. And quickly from the vespers. Whither is thy beloved gone, O thou most beautiful among women? Whither is thy beloved turned aside, and we shall seek him with thee? Depart from me, I will weep bitterly, labor not to comfort me. There is no beauty in him nor comeliness, and we have seen him, there is no sightliness. Stay me up with flowers, compass me about with apples, because I anguish with love, as in the canto of canticles. Our Lady was the mother of sorrows. So her, her heart is the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary. Today, we have devotion to the immaculate heart of Mary, but it's the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary. But today, consider Our Lady's heart in greatest anguish. And that's why she did, had the devotion started, the five Saturdays, was because of her sorrowful heart. There was no one to console her. No one to console her. So she appeared to Sister Lucia. And she, the Sister Lucia says, on December 10th, 1925, the Most Holy Virgin herself appeared, and beside her, borne by a luminous cloud, the child Jesus, the Most Holy Virgin put her hand on my shoulder and showed me her, showed her at the same time a heart surrounded by thorns, which she held in the other hand. At that same moment, the child said to her, Have compassion on the heart of your Most Holy Mother, covered with thorns, with which ungrateful men pierce it at every moment, and there is no one to make an act of reparation to remove them. Our Lady was the mother of sorrows. She had to go through the passion. She had to experience the passion of our Lord. She suffered all the pain, as it were, spiritually in her heart of the passion. She would have died on, the, on Calvary. And St. Bernadine of Siena was, went so far as to say that if we all partook of her sorrow on Calvary, all of mankind would die. That's how much sorrow. But she was held up because she had such <coughs> peace in her heart, being connected with God the Father. And as God the Father, Christ was given by God the Father, <coughs> and our Lord said, my father, uh, uh, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was given by his Father to the world. And at the same time, our Lord told our, the Blessed Mother, Behold thy child, and son, behold thy mother. It was as if Christ had nothing left. No father in heaven and no mother on earth. It was the will, though, that Christ be separated, be given to the world by the Father and the Mother. Our Lady was so, her will was so united to God's that even though she would die if she were not at united, will, united to the will of God or held up by his grace, she gave up her son as well, willingly, on the cross. Full of sorrow, black. I am black but beautiful. Full of grief. And yet that sorrowful heart is pierced more and more by men today, by blasphemies and attacking the Blessed Virgin Mary. And our Lord asks, have compassion on the heart of your most holy mother. And our 
Lady then says, Look, my daughter, at my heart, surrounded with thorns with which ungrateful men pierce me at every moment by their blasphemies and ingratitude. You at least try to console me in announcing my name that I promise to assist at the moment of death with all the graces necessary for salvation, all those who on the first five Saturdays consecutive months shall receive the sacrament of confession, <coughs> receive Holy Communion, recite five decades of the rosary, and keep me company for 15 minutes while meditating on the 15 mysteries of the rosary with the intention of making reparation for my immaculate heart. That's what she asked for, to be consoled. And what great graces we can receive from the five first Saturdays, the nine first Fridays. Five Saturdays in a row. You go to Mass, you go to conf confession eight days before or after, receive Holy Communion, say your daily rosary 15 decades, I mean five decades, and then meditate for 15 minutes with Our Lady with the intention of consoling her. That's all. And that brings so much joy to the Immaculate Heart because uh, nowhere else she can find compassion. I looked for comfort and I found none. I could not be comforted. So why is it five first Saturdays? And number five. Sister Lucia says, as I was in the chapel with our Lord, part of the night on May 29th, 30th, 1930, and speaking to our Lord about questions, I suddenly found myself more intimately possessed by the divine presence. And if I'm not mistaken, here is what was revealed to me. I'm wondering why it's five Saturdays. My daughter, the reason is simple. There are five kinds of offenses and blasphemies uttered against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. One, blasphemies against the Immaculate Conception. Two, blasphemies against her perpetual virginity. Three, blasphemies against her divine maternity while refusing at the same time to recognize her as mother of men. Four, blasphemies of those who publicly seek to place in the hearts of children indifference or scorn or even hatred for the Immaculate Mother. Five, the offenses of those who outrage her directly in the holy images. There, my daughter, is the reason why the Immaculate Heart of Mary asked me to request this small act of reparation, and in consideration of it, to move my mercy to forgive souls who have had the misfortune to offend her. As for you, seek unceasingly through your prayers and sacrifices to move my mercy with regard to these poor souls. Standing on Calvary, Our Lady, the Mother of Sorrows, would have died of sorrow. And what, what, what do men do in return to her who stood there and, and offered the passion with her son as co-redemptress for their salvation, giving her son willingly for our salvation? And what do men give her in return? Blasphemies, scorn, indifference. Yesterday we thought about and those who feel indifferent in a way towards the, to the love of the Sacred Heart and how much it, it loved us and was pierced on the cross for us. But in a special way, <clears throat> there's a special kind of cruelty that comes with being indifferent or having a hatred towards the mother's heart. There's a special cruelty about being indifferent towards the mother. The mother's the loving one. And, and like our Lord says, to move my mercy to forgive those who have had the misfortune to offend her. You don't touch his mother. You don't offend his mother. They have had the misfortune, and believe me, it's a misfortune. And he calls them poor souls. But those who offend Our Lady, I think it's very hard for our Lord to forgive. So that's why he asked that these five first Saturdays, she asked that they be done to console her immaculate heart, her sorrowful immaculate heart, and to move his mercy to forgive those poor souls, those poor, the unfortunate, that have had the misfortune of offending Our Lady. So that's all that's required, and especially nowadays. So much has been <clears throat> gone to waste. There's so much we can do just by doing the five first Saturdays. Especially now, we look at what's going on in the world and in Russia. Five first Saturdays, do them frequently, do them more than once. Do them well, so that the Russia can finally be consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And our Lord, and Sister also, Lucia asked our Lord, why can't you convert Russia? Why do you have to wait until the Pope goes and consecrates it? And he said, because I want the world to know that it, it was through the power and through the
Immaculate Heart of Mary, because I want the Immaculate Heart of Mary to be next to mine, to show that it was her triumph. So it will be her triumph. So we have to go to her. We have to console her heart, beg her, and it will come at her time, and in the meantime, console her heart. So do these five first Saturdays well. Console the Immaculate and Sorrowful Heart of Mother Mary, of Mary, who has suffered so much anguish, who has suffered so much sorrow, and in doing so, she did for our salvation at the foot of the cross, giving her son. She was a co-redemptrix. She was our mother. And she suffered all that pain and sorrow for our salvation. So at least we can do is console her and be thankful for her and do the five first Saturdays well and with devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.